Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this exclusive interview on African startups. We're joined today on All24 News with a special guest, Lavina Ramkisun. She is an advisor for the African Union and the founder of Hue Data. Uh, it's, a, it's a startup that you founded. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much for joining us. Without further ado, uh, Lavina, uh, today the second African um, startup conference started. Uh, what are your first insights and what are uh, your first thoughts on the events? Uh, I think it's been a phenomenal growth. Uh, for me, uh, I attended last year, so part of the inaugural team uh, that put all of this together. So it was really nice to see the rotation from last year to this year and the growth in numbers. I think there's a lot of excitement. Uh, you can feel the energy, uh, which is uh, intoxicating to say the least. All right. <laughs> and how do you envision this conference um, building on last year's success, as you've just mentioned? And in what ways can it uh, propel in technological advancements, especially bringing, uh, bridging the gap in digital, uh, uh, the, bridging the digital gap in regions with limited access to technology? Yeah, I think we've seen uh, quite a good exhibition from startups themselves around the types of technologies that they have to offer. Um, you know, and, and we've seen that grow uh, from last year to this year with the inclusion now, obviously, around uh, artificial intelligence being one of the largest, uh, you know, most spoken about topics, um, together with a few blockchain initiatives. Um, I think there's also quite a need, uh, you know, that we're seeing around uh, accessibility. So, you know, more and more startups uh, are showcasing themselves and coming forward, uh, which is really good to see. So addressing the digital gap is crucial. So since we, I asked you about the digital gap, how can startups utilize artificial intelligence f for their benefit to ensure inclusivity and accessibility, which is a problem uh, in many places around uh, across Africa and around the region, particularly uh, in regions facing infrastructure challenges? Yeah, I think that's such a pertinent question. Um, you know, technology, I believe, is uh, plays a ra rather important role. That role is one that can uh, pretty much, you know, accelerate, uh, you know, political, economical, or even cultural differences that may already exist. So, to give you an example, you know, uh, we could easily have a dashboard view. Uh, you know, of one grain that exists across the continent, as an example, and in real time monitor that. So in any given point in time, we can understand what the value is or which countries have a surplus versus which countries have a deficit. And that will then allow us to reroute, you know, foods and goods into the areas that's actually requiring it and therefore becoming more dependent on each other uh, and surviving as a continent. Uh, so that's one area. I think other areas, uh, you know, that, that bring it really home to startups themselves is really taking the opportunity to leverage things like open source um, tools that may exist, even free tools that may exist. We know that generative AI, as an example, has allowed for a lot of this to reach our homes very quickly, like with the introduction of ChatGPT, Bing, Sydney, and a few others. Um, you know, and, and they literally allow, whether it's from text to voice, you know, text to uh, a whole video, uh, you know, conversion into different areas. Uh, it also can literally allow you to improve efficiency, right? I mean, that's the end game, I guess, in terms of digitization, is really around how can we prove improve the inefficiencies that do exist uh, you know, within uh, the different areas. So say, for example, you had to take, uh, you know, the supply chain as an industry, right? Um, so you can look at each of the different areas and where we could look at autom automation of that. And you can easily catapult and find solutions that can talk to that. Uh, you know, we all are firm believers, I think, within the continent that we need to really build solutions for ourselves, you know, and that really speak to the problems that we're facing on a day to day basis. And uh, from what we've seen, there, there, there's a hunger from startups to actually want to solve all of this. Um, so I think we need to start unlocking the other aspects of the ecosystem to allow them to survive. To survive, especially that AI is the, uh, the talk of the hour and we all need to uh, dive into that. Um, another question uh, would be uh, around revolutionizing sectors with artificial intelligence again. So 
Artificial intelligence potential to revolutionize sectors is huge and immense. How do you anticipate startups leveraging AI to provide essential services such as healthcare, education, uh, and even financial inclusion in, uh, in the whole African region? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, healthcare is a very important one. So is agriculture. Um, you know, let's take, for example, um, something around telemedicine. And imagine for a moment you could uh, have, uh, you know, access to anyone across the continent that had internet connectivity, the ability to have access to a doctor 24-7. That's, that's immense in itself. Imagine for a moment you could have uh, drones that are delivering medicines or medication to rural areas or to any area that is in need of it, um, you know, almost within a 20 minute turnaround time. That's, you know, th those are the areas where I think we're going to start seeing a lot more, uh, you know, focus coming on. Uh, in addition to that, I know things like robotic surgery is becoming quite big. Um, you know, also the, the whole idea around man and machine blending themselves quite a lot. So they speak about, you know, the ethical considerations, but we, we won't delve into that for now. But I think there's also opportunities for us to, you know, look at uh, aesthetics or, you know, uh, uh, prosthetics as an example in terms of leveraging more opportunities in that space itself. I think in, from an agricultural perspective, we've also seen quite a large uptake uh, in terms of that. Uh, you know, from a use case perspective, whether that is crop yielding, whether that's crop prediction, uh, whether that's understanding, you know, what's the weather forecasting looking like. Um, but I think the real value add starts coming in when we introduce chatbots that actually can understand the 2,600 plus odd languages that exist across the continent in real time. So, for example, a new, a, a, a new show could literally have, you know, access to, to have something like that, reaching a much wider audience at a much you know, faster rate um, and, and making it more comfortable for people to engage with. I think that's the first protocol um, that, that would come to mind. So in terms of startups and them actually having to leverage or, or where we're going to see a lot more birth coming from. Um, yeah, I think I, I think there's 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 too many use cases. <laughs> Huge cases that we can actually yeah. invest in to help our African continent uh, face lots of critical uh, challenges and um, problems. Okay, uh, to the next question. Economic independence is a key goal. Uh, it's something really important, uh, really important to reach. So how do startups actually contribute to that and what role can they play in reducing poverty rate and depending uh, on foreign technologies, fostering also self-sufficiency? What's their role in that? Yeah, for me, that is uh, probably the key thing as to why we should get involved in technology is to solve for societal problems. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, matching tech with that becomes, you know, a more impactful narrative that we can actually start saying, you know, we can uplift our continent as a whole, right? Um, so one of the examples that really come to mind for me is a project that I was involved with a few years ago, which was around refugee and homeless people. And, you know, what do they actually need, you know? And, and we went through an exercise of about three, four months spending with them, really trying to get to the root cause of it. And, you know, the, the, the sort of understanding that we came out with was an access to a telephone. And now somebody would ask, but why? What, what does a homeless person have to do with that? But, you know, at the end of it, the inclusion that we ended up delivering to them was the most profound. So, you know, it wasn't only a matter of allowing them access to a, a mobile device. Whether it was connected to the internet or not was irrelevant because we had it on USSD. So, you know, if you didn't have access to a mobile network, you could easily still utilize it. But what it did allow for them to do was to have all of the different restaurants, uh, you know, connected so that any excess foods that they had, someone could now walk in into a restaurant and pick it up and be part of society. Right. That's one example of how we could start driving impact. But, you know, when you talk about, you know, breaking down this economic sort of, uh, uh, you know, block that we have and being able to distribute economic wealth, that for me has a large sort of portrayal around the utilization of both artificial intelligence as well as blockchain. And I think that those two kind of really have a good uh, sort of uh, synergy that they kind of have with each other. Right. And uh, imagine for a moment that you had a mobile device 
that could allow for um, you know one one mobile phone that would allow for uh, an extended uh, range to happen. So you know uh, it would now one mobile device in a rural area could now then go and impact you know maybe another 250 odd uh, mobile devices, bringing reception you know. Uh, it's decentralized uh, mobile reception, but being able to bring it into communities without having to have to put in the necessary infrastructure that's required, as an example. Another example is, you know, um, I think I came across a startup that uh, ran USSD code, um, you know, to allow for people to open up a crypto wallet. Uh, you know, this was during the pandemic phase uh, to help them to bridge the gap to be able to, you know, give them a way to, you know, spend money or being able to, you know, cope with, you know, the kind of scenario that we we all faced at that point in time. So, you know, there's, there's many different ways, many different angles. But I think, you know, for any startup, it's really, really important to really understand the problem that you're solving for. And once you know, and it's really crystal clear the problem that you're solving for, the rest becomes really easy really easy okay so economic um, independence is a key goal as um, we said um, but uh, what are the challenges and opportunities for AI startups I'm moving to challenges what do you foresee for AI driven uh, startups in the African context considering also the factors like regulatory frameworks and uh, talent development and market acceptance yeah, I think you touch on really important ones and, and they're generally the big ones. Yeah. Uh, so regulation in itself is... A problem? It's, it, it so? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, there's so many different angles to that, right? Mm. So we've started off obviously saying that, you know, AI requires some form of a watermark to be able to understand if it is AI driven content or we need some form of a watermark for humans to then say, well, it's 100% human created content, right? So that's like the first initial stages but then we've got to think a little bit further what's down the line and those are things when we talk about AI rights yeah. do, they, do they actually have rights to what capacity to what end right um, if we give them a lot more human-like traits um, you know do we then you know in the same breath uh, you know give them rights that are similar to, to, to the human world right um, beyond that we've got to then start thinking about does AI become incorporated to what degree so if AI becomes incorporated that means it's its own entity it can stand on its own and to date we've already seen you know AI uh, become a CEO of a company we've seen you know a robot become a CEO of a company we've seen it become a citizen of the world we've seen like there, there's so many there's endless examples around that itself right where it's been completely integrated into our lives so it's always important for us you know and this is where regulations play such a key role in terms of helping us to balance the scale of when we've gone too far or when we've kind of you know gone to uh, w where we haven't pushed the boundaries far enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you also touched on something around, you know, marketing and, and access to, to things like that. To the market. Uh, yeah, to the market itself. And uh, that in itself is big. I mean, understanding our local market is so key. Like, I cannot stress it enough, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether or not you're living in South Africa and want to come do business in Algeria, uh, you know, research, understand. And, you know, language is not necessarily a barrier anymore for us because I think uh, we have a spirit amongst ourselves in Africa that we want to solve problems and yeah. we want to move forward. Between us. Exactly. And, and we want to see a better life for ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so why not? You know, I think as much as there are those challenges, but I think there are those opportunities as well in the same breath. I mean, skills is another big one. We've seen a lot of large tech uh, or big tech, as they're known, uh, really invest a lot of uh, funds in terms of skilling the youth, right? I know some have uh, put in money, some have put in, you know, actual skill sets. Um, we've also started seeing in the same breath local sort of universities that are really, you know, bringing forth and adopting rather quickly to allow for, you know, degrees in artificial intelligence or nanotechnology or quantum computing, you know, to kind of really start surfacing and coming through so that they start creating a supportive ecosystem, right? Um, so, so there is that from a talent nurturing perspective. But I also think that uh, something that is required is we sit with so much of talent, we don't know what we're sitting with, yes. right? There's too many, uh, there are too many talents. You know, the African continent is a young, Afri um, is a young continent. And uh, I think there is a lot to invest in. 
isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. I mean, mm. investment is another, right? Um, so, like, uh, how do we actually find the right kind of funds and direct it That's another problem. To, to, the, to, to the right kind of areas that require scalability mm. for us as a continent to be uplifted? I think, you know, as much as we look at a micro level, the micro and macro level kind of needs to start sinking together a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think the help of the likes of the African Union and a few other, uh, you know, governmental support structures play a really big part in terms of us actually achieving that at the end of the day. Exactly. Government regulations would help a lot in finding the limits and not the limits, as you mentioned earlier. Um, moving to uh, the importance of collaboration. Collaboration is very important and it's also emphasized in this uh, conference and during this conference. How crucial is collaboration between artificial intelligence uh, startups and other stakeholders, including governments, uh, including uh, organizations in fostering a robust ecosystem and innovation and growth? Collaboration, collaboration and more collaboration, yeah, right? That's needed. <laughs> we can't have enough of it. Mm. Um, I think it is something that is so key and it's really driven from the whole Agenda 2063 uh, from an AU perspective. Not only that, you know, it needs to get filtered down into grassroots levels. Um, you know, having the ability to unlock ecosystems is what the power of collaboration has. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that in itself should never be under played under any circumstance, uh, whether it is just having a casual conversation with someone to unlock their mind, to think slightly differently, or whether it is a conversation to say, oh, by the way, you know, you do A, I do B. So, you know, perhaps if we join A and B, we could, you know, go in as a consolidated voice rather than us just being segmented, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that from a continent perspective, the drive and the want is, is there to see that we want different for ourselves. And that's starting to filter down into the mindset and the culture of startups themselves, where they are more open to actually collaborate with each other um, compared to previous years. Yeah, and I think, you know, the introduction of BRICS also absolutely helped that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having that presence and having that mandate again, uh, together with, you know, Africa now being part of the G20. There's a lot of things that are moving in the right direction, uh, both from a political, economic and from a social aspect. Uh, so I think now it's, you know, bottom line culturally uh, from a startup mindset. Uh, what is it that we actually need? Right. So is it governments that need to then work uh, with more private sector? Is it then startups? So we're actually uh, putting an initiative together, uh, you know, in terms of uh, pulling all of these different bodies and entities together to actually achieve something. 100 percent where it's an independent body that brings together private sector network together with government sector network. Mm -hmm. And that private sector network is inclusive of you know uh, all micro enterprises startups together with big tech that really then have a voice and a vehicle that bridges you know over into the government sector that then helps us to kind of then narrate that uh, much better and to synchronize and you know get a bit of harmony you know whether it's around policy whether it's around you know investment whatever the case may be very, very good um, insights. Thank you very much, Lavina, for joining us on Al24 News and for your insights, for your time as well. Thank you so much. And thank you, dear viewers, for your time. We'll join you or you'll join us in the next interviews. Bye bye.